Thanks. Compliments of Fireplace Betty in 1998. Okay. I'm gonna play. All right, this first song is gonna be called Scuzz Ray. And uh, please, some hawks and trying to fish with leftover meats. We watched the baseball game and then we started to rock. And that sent us down into the kelp. <laughs> you cried for help <laughs> to the people up on the cliff who were trying out their copter. I worked the bilge pump with all my might. And slowly the boat began to rise. And you got all mad when I told you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> all you wanted to do was tie the ropes and knots and throw the anchor over the side. Well, I forgot we were over the unexploded mines. Like it said on the chart. And the explosion blew up a bunch of crabs onto the deck. And before we could get to the remains, the ants carried them down into the bilge where they had made themselves a mound in between the ribs. And by that time, I'd had enough. Yeah, I'd had enough. Fuck yeah, I'd had enough. <laughs> so I sprayed a piece of cake with raid and threw it their way. <laughs> the chemicals in the spray reenacted with the oil in the bilge it turned into a stinking foam that rose up through the cabin sole and into our supper bowls. And when we buttered up our buns, they turned into silicone and ruined our brand new cushions. <laughs> But in the end, you know, in the end, the end that always comes, we used up 
all that goo to rebed the ports and the stanchions. And when the tiller broke, when we hit the sub, we had some left in a tub and smeared it into the cracks with a belaying pin. <laughs> That is a hot fire. That's a hot fire. Okay. This song is about a girl I know. And, uh, uh it's funny when you read the, uh, the weddings in the papers back home when you've been along on your journeys and come back and see who's gotten married and someone sticks out. This is about the pretzel. A girl we used to call the pretzel. Dark. That's 
a pretty dress, though, I, I guess. What did you say? You pissed aunt. Give me that stupid guitar. I got a number I wrote myself, and it happens I, to be about... I know what that is. That's a uh, little Susie's dress. <laughs> little Susie's dress, the old song. Why don't we do it together? Uh, I know it. Everybody knows well, it.
Whipping, whipping his reindeer to death. Right. The Burl Ives lives in the underground cave. It's made out of silver and gold. It's wearing the white socks. He's drinking Tabasco sauce. He's blowing his nose in a tuna fish can. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah, I had one. All right. Here it is. It was four o'clock. Ted Meyer was walking home from high school. <laughs> Except he really wasn't walking because last summer Ted lost both his feet when he stepped on an unexploded Civil War bomb that was in the sandbox at school. Now he's in a wheelchair and rolling along 7th Avenue on the bad side of town. <laughs> As he went by Joe's liquor store, two hookers coaxed him into the alley with the promise of a blowjob. <laughs> Little Ted's knowledge, the hooker's pimp Blodo was waiting behind the dumpster with a piece of rebar. <laughs> <laughs> when the hookers were unbuttoning Ted's pants, Blodo jumped out and brained him from behind. When Ted woke up, his wallet and his wheelchair and his pants were gone. <laughs> and it was Halloween night. <laughs> well, then some drunk kids in white sheets came up to Ted and pulled out knives from their candy bags. Ted did a roll and flipped, on, flipped up onto the back steps of the liquor store. <laughs> he told the kids to leave him alone because he was really feeling sick from eating too much yellow candy. <laughs> I'm trying to get a holiday. <laughs> oh, here, all right, all right. I got one more story, and I'll get off the stage. Here. This is called Story for the Holiday Season or Turkey Jaw. <laughs> I mean, what about the turkey jaw? I seen one in my garage. Really? Okay, it was not Thanksgiving. It was not even Christmas. But the ice was forming and the frogs were bubbling under it. At the bottom of the pond sludge lay a turkey jaw <laughs> that Larry had tossed into the pond to see if he could coax an alligator closer to his high-powered homemade machine gun. <laughs> The experiment failed when the gun misfired and the alligator leaped out onto the bank and began to burp out foaming cyanide sauce all over Larry's legs, which instantly turned to burning mayonnaise. <laughs> the next week, somebody found the alligator going through a knocked over trash can, captured it with a piece of chicken and a rope. The alligator is now on display at the town center runoff pond. <laughs> Do I have any more time? Thanks for Steve Palmberg, you giving me the grant to be here tonight. <laughs> I really, uh, it's great. <laughs> no, don't let me burn up too much time here. <laughs> burn up. Yeah, you, want to, uh, you can do one more song. Alright, I'll do one more song. <laughs> Alright, I'll do one more song and I'll get off the seat. <laughs> 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 Alright, yeah. All right, 
right, this song's got that feeling of savage. Get, get, you, get your blood going, yes. <laughs> Gary Nervo, I know you're out there. Well, I've been paddling a double canoe while you've been riding on a Caribbean cruise and I feel like a savage. I feel like a savage. Yeah, I feel like a savage. I feel like a savage. Like a savage. I feel like a savage. 